Freddy Conduri is a professor of, uh, of sustainable development at the School of Economics, Athens. And uh, she's also uh, the elected president of the European Association of Environmental and Natural Resource Economics. Uh, professor Conduri held economic positions at Cambridge uh, and London, um, the, the University of Reading, and the London School of Economics. Um, so I think that she also another very relevant remark, I think, is that she is part of the 10 year development plan for Greece. You are working uh, for uh, drafting the, uh, the ministerial committee plan. Uh, so that I find it extremely interesting. So it means that really you have uh, uh, hands on in terms of uh, developmental solutions. Uh, so Fabi, uh, up to you again. I see that you have an impressive um, picture or, 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 or drawing to, to show and begin your yeah. presentation. Explain that, what it means, and uh, how do you see things uh, uh, getting out of this, uh, uh, you know, I eat you, you eat me kind of <laughs> approach. <laughs> uh, is, there, is there any way where we can stop being uh, destroyed by one another? Can we cooperate? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, great thanks to the organizers. As a fellow of the World of Academy of Art and Science, I am always um, honored to be part of our events, but also thankful to be part of this community with, uh, which is able to gather so many uh, extraordinarily, and I will say useful people that can really provide solution pathways to the um, current chaos, if I am allowed to say that. So uh, as I see it, uh, at, at the moment we are facing multiple crises, they have been um, identified by the previous uh, speakers in this session, the amazing previous speakers in this session, I must say, we are facing the pandemic, the huge recession that derives from the pandemic, the climate crisis, which basically means the, uh, the increased average global temperature creates, translates into uh, increased frequency and severity of um, natural hazards, which uh, kill uh, hundreds of thousands of people and cost uh, trillions of dollars every year um, in terms of uh, loss in economic output and loss in infrastructure. And of course, the biodiversity collapse crisis, the collapse of the ecosystem services on which our production and consumption is based. And of course, there are other sleeping elephants, other crises. Uh, the equality crisis have been mentioned before, equality between genders, between uh, the developed countries and the global south, equality with regards to access to safety, education, and uh, so on. And to add to this crisis, I would add uh, the population increase crisis, the immigration crisis. And given that the world is as resilient as the last country and person in it, we need to really regain the resilience of the interaction between um, humans, nature, and the economy. So the economy and the society are uh, human centric, but they also interact with nature and the interaction of the three has been uh, extensively unsustainable throughout uh, the last century at least. Uh, and uh, we need to regain uh, a, a, our a pathway that is sustainable in order to create resilience, uh, ecosystemic resilience, social resilience, economic resilience. And indeed, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. It's powerful and it's fast. 
I, I lead an international cult, uh, cluster for research on sustainability transition. And basically it's composed of three big research uh, institutions. One at the Athens University of Economics and Business, one at the Athena Research and Innovation Center, the biggest center uh, in Greece on information technology. The EIT Climate Kick, which is um, uh, basically the biggest European public-private partnership for accelerating um, uh, innovations that are relevant for the transition to climate neutrality. And then in uh, this uh, cluster, I, um, we have the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. We work with the Sustainable Solutions uh, Network, uh, a UN initiative, um, an initiative under the auspices of the UN General Secretary uh, with uh, Jeff Sachs at Columbia University as a president. I co-chair the European Hub and the Greek Hub. What we do here, we work on research and innovation, innovation acceleration, deep demonstration, education, training, and policy interface, science policy interface, in order to be able uh, to restore uh, the resilience between the interaction between humans and uh, nature, between the economy, the society, and nature. And just to showcase with a snapshot how um, non-sustainable is our current pathway, I share some um, pictures from the latest United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network development report. This is how peace, justice, and strong institution as SDG uh, is uh, performing. And uh, basically, red means that you are um, facing huge challenges in order to implement the SDG 16, relevant for peace, justice, and strong, uh, strong institutions. Orange means that you, uh, you still have major challenges. Yellow means minor challenges. And green means you've actually achieved the SDGs. And you can see our planet dressed in red, meaning that we face huge challenges in most of, of the places in the world. Uh, in implementing this SDG. And although the situation is better when we uh, picture the partnerships around the globe, we still face huge challenges uh, with regards to partnering in order to help each other and increase and enhance our ability to implement the goals through collaboration. And if you look at the quality of education, uh, SDG 4, again, uh, the situation is better than the previous SDGs that I've shown case, but um, you can see that there, there are many places in the world, and especially in Africa, where we have red, and uh, many places in the world where we have orange. And this shows, uh, shows uh, how uh, the different countries across the world can ensure mm -hmm. an inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And finally, this is the snapshot of how we affect other countries, the spillover effect of each country. And this basically shows how much we care for other countries. And the deeper the, the blue, the better the country in um, producing actions that have positive effects on other countries' abilities to achieve the SDGs. So all these pictures show that we really need to work much more on working together in order to secure the implementation of the SDGs, uh, the only other global agenda together with the Charter of Human Rights that uh, can protect people and can showcase a vision for the future that is sustainable, that is not um, 
uh, uh, reducing the ability of uh, the current future generation to enjoy a, a, a welfare that is um, at least as good as the welfare of the previous generation. And what we have in place, we have the SDGs and the 169 goals, the Paris Agreement. In Europe, we have the European Green Deal that tries to put into the center a green and digital transition that leaves no one behind in order to produce positive growth uh, multipliers, uh, produce new jobs, and ensure that everybody is engaged in this uh, um, uh, transition to a prosperous, uh, sustainable future uh, via enhanced uh, social cohesion. And after the COVID, we have the next generation EU that finances creates fiscal space for transformative public investments in order uh, to really accelerate the green and digital and social cohesion transition. And in 2021, we had many laws, the climate law, the EU taxonomy, the Fit for 55 package, uh, just to uh, end up with a, a, a map where Europe, of course, is more advanced in terms of climate neutrality and resilience because it has put into place regulations and, and laws and directives that actually support the transposition of the European commitments uh, into actual action. But we also face a big momentum around the world of uh, pledges for climate neutrality around uh, mid-century. This is important because it shows the potential of the globe to really collaborate in mitigating a public a global bad, which is climate um, uh, crisis, climate change. And if we see what happened with COVID, the, the production of the vaccine, not the deployment, but the production of the vaccine is again showcasing the ability of people to collaborate in order to mitigate a crisis. And uh, what I want to um, also share with you is that this transition is really a science-driven transition. It needs a holistic interdisciplinary uh, framework of analysis that is driven by science and that is uh, engaging uh, the, uh, the public, everybody, through a big investment of upskilling and reskilling. And this is something that we document in the two basic response uh, reports that we produce is SDSN Europe, the Sustainable Development Report, and the report on the transformations for the joint implementation of Agenda 2030 and the European Green Deal. I will close here by saying that the transition is driven by science and technology by digitalization, renewables energy, circular economy, nature-based solutions, adaptation projects. It also uh, driven by sustainable land use and food system. Both the energy system and the land use system are going to be transformed through innovation. Innovation leaders in the world now, the green and the blue bubble on this slide is India and China. So one crucial element in this transition is education. The ability of our universities to produce people, to produce citizens that are able to work in interdisciplinary holistic frameworks that understand the interdependency between the different SDGs uh, that are able to connect education, research, and entrepreneurship. And we have produced the getting to getting started with SDGs in universities at SDSN uh, framework. And uh, here we showcase how our education can be transposed into something really um, uh, into something that can support the implementation of SDGs. 
a major initiative which I will be able to discuss later on, on education for sustainable development and global citizenship. And of course, the firm belief that when you upskill and reskill the people, it is uh, it, it important to do so, not just to find the, 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 the labor force for the new transform era of the green and digital transition, but also to support the vulnerable, those that are gonna be uh, facing regressive effects from the transition to sustainability. And one final remark among closing, whatever the developed countries are able to do with their fiscal space and their financial resources will not be enough. The um, developed world should show solidarity in terms of financing for a green and digital recovery in the developed world, increase lending to multilateral development banks to provide low-income countries, developing countries with funding for achieving a sustainable um, a recovery from COVID, from achieving to attract the technology that is needed for this recovery, the funds that are needed for the public infrastructure, but also for investment in education. And um, uh, keep in mind that all the public money of the world will not be enough to uh, pay for this transition, both for the developed and developing world. We really need to work with the private sector and create a welfare-inclusive public-private partnerships. Thank you very much.